we interrupt this program to bring you this special news bulletin. After many years of claiming that this could not be done, it has finally been done. Ladies and gentlemen, the game Pursuit of the Pink Panther has officially been dumped. That's right, you heard me correctly. The long sought after game Pursuit of the Pink Panther has officially been dumped and is now available to the general public. That's right, you heard me correctly, ladies and gentlemen. Pursuit of the Pink Panther has officially been dumped. And if you would like to play the game yourself, head over to the link in the description below. Thanks again to the hard work by Dutchman2000 and the immortal Thomas Gench. You have heard correctly. Again, I cannot say it enough. Pursuit of the Pink Panther is now available in ROM format. On a side note, remember, this ROM will work on the latest version of Stella, but will not work on a Harmony cart. Repeat, this will not work on a Harmony cart as of yet. If there are any more updates, I will let you know as soon as they become available. We now return you to our regularly scheduled programming, already in progress. Hi everyone and welcome to Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host, Anthony Gamer, and I'm Larry, Larry the Lion. And in today's episode, we will be discussing Atari 2600 games from the deep. Our oceans make up 75% of our planet. Strangely enough, scientists guesstimate that we have explored less than 20% of those oceans. Wow, that's not a lot. It may be even less. With that in mind, it's not surprising that there may be some eerie creatures swimming around in the deep of the ocean. And that's what the subject of many of today's games are about. The games that are going to be discussed today are not only ones that are available in NTSC format, but also some games in PAL. So... Without further ado, let's get started. You ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready when you are. All right then. And our first game for today is Dolphin from Activision from 1982, programmed by Matt Hubbard and Bob Whitehead. Not only is this a great game from the deep, but I also consider this to be a lost classic, and you'll find out why. All right, in this game, you take on the role of this dolphin, and you're trying to guide her through openings in the seahorse schools by listening to sonic tones and catching waves. Okay, now you have a seagull up there, and you can jump up and catch the seagull, and then he gives you the power to get rid of that mean old squid that's coming after you. You also have to use the currents as you can slip forward at a quicker pace and you can use the reverse currents to get the squid to get away from you so it's this game involves a lot of listening as you will use the tones to help determine where the openings are and hopefully get away from that nasty squid that keeps chasing after you among other things i found this game to be very unique and really definitely one game that I don't really think has been made since although there have been other dolphin games uh, there have I believe there have I mean not for the Atari but I believe there's been other dolphin related games uh, this has to be probably uh, one of the best uh, ocean related games that I've ever played uh, definitely a lost classic as when you think about games by Activision this probably isn't one that readily comes to mind. And like a lot of the Activision games, if you're able to score a certain amount of points, you get a patch. For instance, in this game, if you score 80,000 points, you could take a picture of the screen back in the day, send it in, and become a member of Friends of Dolphins. Right you are, Larry. Now, if you were able to get a really high score, uh, they don't give you the exact amount, but they say it's under 500,000, a secret word will be shown on the screen. You would take a picture of that and send it in, and you would get this patch for the Secret Society of Dolphins. Next up, we have a prototype as we try to throw a couple in every one of these list episodes if there are any available. And this one is Aquaventure from 1983, programmed by Gary Shannon and Todd Fry. All right, now in this game, you take on the role of this diver and, and you are trying to get down to the bottom of the ocean and pick up this treasure and bring it back up. Of course, if that was all there was to it, it wouldn't be much of a game. Uh, you have these fish that are trying to stop you. Not only the, are the fish dangerous, but if you touch the sides, you will also be killed. All right, now it starts off relatively simple, uh, but as time goes on, 
the fish are, become more aggressive and you run out of air quicker. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, you will see that turtle and he is moving to the side where the air is. It says air up there. And as he moves, you lose air. So if you do not get back to the top with your treasure by the time he uh, gets to the thing to the end, you die. Um, the game looked like it was pretty well complete, although my biggest complaint with this game is that uh, sometimes the sprites kind of mix in a little bit and it's kind of hard to see. Uh, plus, the trench itself really doesn't change much. Although the game is fully playable, um, it does need a little bit of fine tuning uh, before it would actually be acceptable to be released. Alright, next up we have our uh, second prototype. This is Save the Whales from 1983 uh, from 20th Century Fox, programmed by Steve Beck. Uh, this was supposed to be a game that was made in conjunction with uh, Greenpeace. Uh, that's exactly right, Larry. Now, in this game, you're trying to stop these guys from killing the whales. Um, now, it's easier said than done because they drop those trap things really, really fast. And there were a few kind of things in this game I really thought, you know, a couple changes that needed to be made. Um, like I said, that thing drops really fast. And if you don't have lightning fast reflexes, which I don't, you're going to end up uh, losing the game. Um, it's probably not a bad thing that this game wasn't officially released, as I can see this is not doing well um, in uh, testing. Uh, a couple other games that they had planned to release that I think never got past the planning stage were Dutch Elm Defender and Attack of the Baby Seals. Yeah. Now back to the world of Activision. We have Fishing Derby from 1980, programmed by David Crane. All right, this game is pretty simple. Your objective is to catch more sunfish than your opponent. Uh, and it's not between just you and the other fishermen. Uh, you got a big black shark uh, lurking down below trying to steal your catch. Uh, it's pretty cool because you can get the small fish and then you can go really deep and try to get the big fish. But of course, you always gotta worry about that confounded shark coming to get your uh, fish well, before you can catch them. Oh yeah, we've had a lot of fun playing this. You know, matter of fact, this could be the subject of our next uh, Anthony and Larry play. How would you think about that? Oh yeah, that would be kind of cool. Especially since, uh, really, we uh, neither one of us are really all that good at this game. I'll speak for yourself. I am a good fisherman in real life. Oh yeah, but, you know, yeah, you are, kind of, but, you know, I do it the hard way. I just jump in the water and try to catch them. Uh, you use a pole. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say. Anyway, uh, really a fun game uh, that game players of all ages can enjoy. Uh, like I said, Larry and I have had a blast playing it, and this is one of, uh, definitely one of David Crane's uh, best games, although really, I don't really think he ever had a bad one. All right, next up we have Name This Game from U.S. Games. It was programmed by Todd Marshall, Henry Will, Roger Booth, Sylvia Day, and Wes Traeger. Now, they were having a contest for this game, you know, for the fans. Unfortunately, I think the company went belly up before it actually got a name. Now, in this game, you are a diver trying to defend your uh, treasure from this giant octopus and from a shark. Now, a friend of yours feeds on the boat will send you some air. Uh, as you can see that meter down there that's kind of running low. Uh, not a, a, kind of a cool game is you, like I said, you can kind of... It's very imaginative. I'll give it that. And honestly, though, it's really kind of hard to believe that it took this many people uh, to make to complete this game. Uh, incidentally, in Europe, it was given a title, uh, that being Octopus. All right, our next game is Scuba Diver from 1983 by Panda slash Sancho. Obviously, this is a game that was made in Europe. In this particular game, you take on the role of the scuba diver and you are trying to kill these fish and then move on to another area. This game is quite difficult uh, as the fish come at you really hard and yeah, it's not really an easy game, but once you get the hang of it, it's still pretty difficult. All right, next up from 1983, this is a game from Bitcorp. 
uh, one of our PAL games, and this is Sea Monster. In this game, you take on the role of some guy in a ship, and you are trying to bomb these sea monsters in the ocean. But be warned, because they do shoot back. Oh, uh, you're kidding, right? Yeah, I... I can't even imagine the sea monster shooting back, but but anyway, it was the 80s, and it was a PAL game. Uh, still a lot of fun, even if it is kind of silly. And next up, we have yet another Activision classic. This is Sequest from 1983, programmed by Steve Cartwright. All right, now, in Sequest, you take on the role of this yellow submarine, and you are trying to destroy these waves of sharks and enemy subs and you're trying to rescue friendly divers and bring them up to the surface. Uh, quite a cool shoot 'em up game and really one that I honestly has to have to say this game really stands the test of time because I, I have played this game one time for hours on end not really all that long ago. Uh, really enjoyed it even when I was a kid. Uh, I really liked this game. And I will tell you the truth, um, got to be at least one of my favorites, at least in my top 10. And if you're able to get 50,000 points, you will be able to join the sub club. You just took a picture of the screen, mailed it in, and got this really cool patch. All right, and next up we have a homebrew. This is Seaweed Assault. This was programmed by uh, Dwayne Allen Hahn. And in this game, you, uh, do, you pilot... Uh, a manatee, you avoid seaweed that can damage your vessel, as well as rothopods, a protected species of cephalopods that travel deep to feed on parasites that attach to mature seaweed. Your goal is to keep the sea lanes free of seaweed, and to end, you must blast the seaweed with your torpedoes. However, watch out for mature seaweed tentacles that reach up from the depths to try and grab your manatee. Really a fun game, really enjoyed it. Uh, definitely one of the best homebrews. And if you'd like to purchase this game, you can find it on AtariAge.com for the low price of $25. So head over to the AtariAge.com store and pick up your own copy of Seaweed Assault. And our final game for today is Bermuda Triangle from 1982 by Data Age. In this game, you are piloting a submarine and you are trying to pick up priceless treasures on the ocean's floor and then deliver them to the waiting ship up top. Of course, if that's all there was to the game, it really wouldn't be much of a game, now would it? So, in order to pick up these treasures, you have to scan them, float back up to the top, and drop them off to the correct ship. Which uh, can be difficult because sometimes it's hard to remember which are the treasures and which are bombs, and then at the same time, which of the ships at the top are friends and which of them are enemies. Also, you have these uh, sharks and all these alien crafts that are trying to stop you. So there's a whole lot going on in this game at the same time. Honestly, I have to say that this game is definitely a lost classic as I have enjoyed playing this game since I first discovered it a few years ago. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give us a great big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when we upload new episodes. And please, consider helping us out in Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help this channel to grow. So please be generous and help us out on Patreon. The link is in the description below. In our next episode, we will discuss Rare and Valuable Atari 2600 Games Part 4. And this will be our final episode in that series, so you will not want to miss that. Well, until next time, I'm Anthony Gamer. And I'm Larry, Larry the Lion. And we will see each and every one of you in the next episode. Until then, have yourselves a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.